All right, so we're just going to wait, build an audience, and then, as promised, all week I'm going to be doing my actual workouts in real time, training with limitations, and I'll keep reminding you all throughout what this is about in that I'm going to be training my body parts around my specific physique after 50 limitations, being uh, 56, going on 57 now. I'm not trying to impress you with my physique. I'm trying to impress upon you what expertise is and how and why you should try to train around limitations as much as you can. So I have severe limitations in two areas. Lower back, I had surgery back in 2000, a double laminectomy. And over the course of the years, they said that the scar tissue would build up there. Um, and it has. So I can't do much spinal compression and I can't do much lower lumbar stress either. But there's ways around that. A lot of people will write me and say, well, I can't do any of these exercises anymore. And so what happens is uh, the areas just get weaker and weaker and that makes them more susceptible to injury. I've also got severe osteoarthritis in both shoulders that was diagnosed way back in oh, 2003. And osteoarthritis is a condition that's never going to get better. It's just going to progress. So you manage it as best you can. I'm going to show you how I train around those limitations as well. With the bony changes that take place in my shoulders, there's certain things I can no longer do, certain limitations on range of motion. Uh, but with expertise, you work around those rather than trying to work through them. And you don't say you just can't train anymore. So I've got as much limitations as anyone else and at my age etc I thought we'd do workouts in real time all right so I'm gonna do all week I'm gonna go live with my workouts including GPP uh, including rotator cuff work that I do to manage my osteoarthritis uh, but uh, and it's severe my osteoarthritis is pretty severe but workouts actually help don't hinder or make it worse so these are very very important things so today's leg day and uh, you might want to tune in, tune out at various times, but because it's legs, I'm going to start with GPP for lower body, get into the leg workout, and then as part of my recovery during the lower body work for squats, I'll do my GPP for upper body, and that should be part of every single workout that everybody does. So that's really important as well. So uh, I will answer between sets training questions on what I'm doing. I'm not going to answer diet questions or things like that. This isn't a, a webinar. This is an actual workout. So um, I will answer questions about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But uh, that's, we're going to limit the questions and answers to that. So if we have an audience, then I'll get started. So, all right. So I'm going to do today's leg day, like I said. So naturally we begin our GPP with lower body emphasis. General preparation phase, I like to start with hip swings. And then I'm gonna go into a series of reach lunges. So, very important. So I usually like to do anywhere from 15 to 20. I'll do very front and then side. And then I'm gonna do the reach lunges, make sure hips and knees are warmed up. And I'm also gonna show you Notice left hand, left leg, support. And then I'm also going to show you some exercises you've probably never seen or done before. As a result of my expertise, you can angle the camera as I move around. And so all week, you're going to be seeing some exercises you probably haven't seen before. As a result of me learning how to train around my limitations combined with my expertise on how muscles function in various ranges and planes of motion. So that's important as well. My workouts might take a little longer than they usually do because of my talking with you all, but that's okay. This is my uh, wind down weeks of this program before I take a Christmas break. So very, very important. Any questions coming in? We have an audience. So now I'll move into frontal plane hip swing. You just follow me with the camera. Whew. 
One of the things I like to add to my frontal plane hip swings at the end is just a little hip circumduction. All right, this little movement here. Circumduction of the hips. Really, really nice to loosen up the hips before a workout. So. Notice I'm up on my toes, on the support leg. I'm not on my heels flat-footed. And then circumduction of the hips. All right, so that starts now a little subtle thing because of my own personal scenario, something that you probably wouldn't notice, but on leg day specifically, I make sure I begin everything my GPP with my left leg, and that's just because of my back injury. It just worked out that way. This is part of biofeedback and feeling your way through it with your own particular body. So on leg day specifically, I always start with warm ups with the left leg. And now reach lunges, do 12 each side. I like to do 12 each leg. Never be in a hurry to race through your warm ups. All right, it's not about got to get to the workout as fast as you can. It's about efficient warming up to be ready to work out as effectively as you can. So now I'll go into a lateral reach. So I'm getting all warmed up through the kinetic chain, which is really helping my lower back. It's not starting my workout all stiff. All right, it's so loosening it up. And now I'll do posterior reach. Notice already a bit labored breathing, just from warming up. And that's warming up, right? Better than walking on a treadmill or riding a bike. <sighs> You let me know when there's a question or mm -hmm. a comment. If there's comments, you can just read them out. Mm -hmm. <sighs> 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 Uh, 
You have a question. Would this warm up be for upper and lower body? Come on, right now it's, this is GPP for lower body because because I'm about to do a leg workout. So your warm up should reflect what the workout's going to be. You'll see I'm about to do upper body GPP between sets of my actual workout so I can get a certain metabolic effect. So finally, that's a good question. So finally, for my warm up, I'm just unloading my knees and hips. You can use exercise tubing. I use the TRX. I could use my functional trainer. And I just take what my body gives me, looking for range of motion. Notice how I get butt to heels. So I got a nice, that's because of, that's because of all the stuff I just did previously. So notice I haven't even started my workout yet. This is all just GPP. This is so my workout can be as effective as possible while prehabbing areas for my limitations, which I'll get to. But now my low back is sufficiently mobile. My knees and hips are loose. I'm offsetting my body weight. So this unloading the knees and hips should be part of every single warm-up session you do, whether or not you're training legs or not. Every day in the gym, this is far more effective than walking on a treadmill or, or riding on a bike. Okay, and as you're older, then unloading the knees and hips like this before workout makes really, really good sense for long-term joint health, mobility, kinetic chain expression, things like that. Notice how deep I can get. If you can't get that deep, that's fine. Take what your body gives you, all right? So another way I can do that, if I wanted, was just with some power straps. Got some really heavy power straps here, and you can use those as well. Pull out, and just offset your body weight. Boom. All right. I'm feeling my oats, I'm good to go. Any questions or comments? All right, folks. So, pitter patter, let's get at her. Remember, the title of this is Training with Limitations. So, today's leg day, I'll try to move most of my exercises toward the camera as much as I can, but the camera follow me around as well. So, I'm gonna try to get this done in an hour but it's not about racing against the clock. This is a surfing, surfing the reps curve workout, innervation training, and this is at home and physique after 50 stuff as well. So I'm gonna warm up, I'm gonna start with squats. So a nice light warm up. Look at the squat depth that I get. That's a nice light warm up set. And now GPP for my upper body as my legs rest. So just gonna start my arm. Notice I start slow. You take what your body gives you. Can the physique after 50 be good for 40 year olds as well? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Just honor your age. Don't try to train like you used to. Be who you used to be. That, that, um, that applies mentally and emotionally as well. You know? Embrace where you're at. 
and that includes your age. Don't try to fight it or resist it. So between sets, I'm GPP for my upper body because it has no effect on the recovery for my lower body. And it's a nice way to keep moving as well. So as you can see, it gets an adaptive response. So real training isn't about the sexy stuff. It's about the consistent stuff. And it's about being healthy. There's no point in training yourself into the ground, especially if you're over 50, because that's the law of diminishing returns. And that'll come back and bite you on the behind. So, so the first set was just to get into the plane and range of motion of muscle function of the first exercise, what we call physical rehearsal. This set, very few reps because I don't want to tire my legs out so I can reach my maximum load. Maybe get me from the side and behind on this one as well. So. <coughs> Well, I'm just going to do five or six here. Up. 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 Because that's still a warm-up set, I'm not about pushing the intensity. I'm about preparing the load. So that's very, very important to keep in mind. Don't burn yourself up on, on warm-up sets if the goal is getting work capacity increased. And now I'm back to GPP for upper body. Now keep in mind the title of this workout, Training with Limitations. So, even though I have lower back issues, because I'm doing the dumbbells from a hang position at the side of each leg, I train the legs. I've got very little lower lumbar strain, no spinal compression at all. So people who write me and say they've got back, lower back issues, so they can't do these exercises is actually wrong because then the surrounding structures just get weaker and weaker and make you more susceptible to injury. So training with limitations. I've got no discs in my lower back and nothing but scar tissue there, but I've learned to train around them and that's what's important. So again, I'm not doing this workout to impress you with my 56 year old physique. Those days are gone. I'm trying to impress upon you how and why you can train in spite of and regardless of limitations. So. Uh, you have one more question. Sure. Christina, is there a big difference between dumbbell squats and barbell squats? Yeah, I just explained it. Barbell squats are going to put lower lumbar strain and spinal compression. If you're a person with any kind of issues through the spine or mm -hmm. through the neck, you don't want that. So this is why I'm training around these limitations. So now I'm on to my work set. All right, here we go. Pitter patter, let's get at her. All right. over 50 you don't want to train to failure especially as you get closer to max loads like this so the closer you get to working with maximum loads over 50 the more you back away from pushing to failure I'll make up for that later in the workout back to my GPP for upper body doesn't affect my lower body recovery and you have another question? Sure, uh, loud and clear. Yeah. 
How do you plan your workouts? Plan for the weeks or whole month ahead? Programming, programming, programming. So I plan what I do today affects what I'll do tomorrow and is based upon what I did yesterday. And those things rotate week to week, program to program. So if you read my book, The Able Approach, it outlines my whole innervation training methodology, which is all about the fact that for physique development, the focus should be on innervation, which is best suited through ranges and planes of motion of muscle function and not an element of load. Very, very important. Now I'm continuing my upper body GPP as my leg rests. How many people we got on there? Just give me a, a hand. So my shoulders are getting loose as my legs are recovering. So very nice. I don't do all my GPP for upper body between sets and I monitor my oxygen day. Second work set. Notice how I sink into it. I try to sit with the weights and then get deep, as deep a squat as possible. And then now my GPP for upper body is more mobile oriented. What's your thoughts on goblet squats for those who have lower back issues? Hard to execute. It can make things worse. I like the dumbbell squat better. The goblet squat, if you have a tendency, you're weak in the hips or you're restricted in the knees, you're gonna bend forward and put unnecessary strain on the low back, which is what you're trying to avoid. I prefer the dumbbell squat into the sit position. Hang on. So again, the title of this is Training with Limitations, and this is Leg Day Workout. Is there a question before my next set? Yes. Over, uh, Daniel's over 61, uh, been a follower of resistant training more so in the last few years to be the best workout. Your thoughts? Follow me right now yeah. and get my book, Physique After 50. There's workouts in there designed specifically for our age group, and at age 61, Daniel, Good motivation right there, man. Let's go, let's hang them and bang them. Notice how deep I can get on those. So. Oh, Daniel has the book. Good. If you understand the way the methodology is written out in that book, Daniel, you'll understand everything you need to know. Now, finally, some pull aparts for upper body. <clears throat> Thanks for
for your information, been following you for several years. <laughs> Appreciate it. <clears throat> now these pull aparts, again, after age 45, 50, should be part of every warm up or between set rest. Now a lot of people do these with hockey sticks or broom handles, but as you age, use something that allows you to actually pull it apart. Otherwise it's too stiff and it can do more harm on that area. Remember, you're trying to prehab. Me with my advanced osteoarthritis, pain is my biofeedback friend. I use pain as an indicator of too much, too little, not enough. All right, so I make pain my ally, not my enemy. Very important. Last set of squats. Booyah! Giddy up, buttercup. Just get me from the side here for the depth. Up. 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 Again. Because I'm hanging them at my side. Very little lower lumbar strain. No spinal compressive forces. So I'm a guy with no discs in my lower back. So if I can hang them and bang them, you can hang them and bang them with a little know-how. So now, according to innervation training, you can put that back up there. See the oxygen debt? Oxygen debt is an indicator of how closely you're working in proximation to your work capacity. No oxygen debt, you're not training hard enough to equate to your work capacity. Now because I'm training from a vertical to a horizontal plane, I'll show you how to warm up. So I'm going to lunges next. I got some fun stuff to show you down the road in this workout. So that's six sets of squats. Four work sets, two warm up sets. And now, just to warm up for lunges, you have knee or lower back issues, take two stability balls, just offset your body weight by pushing on them to change your range and plane of motion without inviting trauma to the knee and hip. Just nice and simple. Just nice, smart physique after 50 stuff. Boom. Simple. Doesn't count as a set or anything. Just a, more of a warm up. In between sets, I'm going to continue prehabbing, doing work on my shoulders. So. Any comments or questions? And let me know you're out there, folks, if you're watching. Exercise number two, we're hanging, we're banging.
alternating lunges. One of the best exercises for overall leg development and balance. Again, don't say you can't do lunges because of knee or lower back issues. You're probably just not preloading them and prehabbing them correctly. So, as I'm resting between sets. <sighs> monitoring my oxygen debt. One of the most frustrating questions I get is how long should I rest between sets? Never use outside in factors like the clock to rest between sets. Rest as long as it takes for you to subjectively assess if you can do your next set with equal or greater intensity. And to do that, monitor your oxygen debt. Yeah, out loud. Okay, when doing lunges, when you're pushing up, what area of the foot do you concentrate on? Good question. I don't concentrate on my foot, I concentrate on my leg muscles. See, there's another mistaken personal trainer myth about all this nonsense. Don't let your knee travel over your foot. Focus on the ball of your foot, focus on your heel. You know what? Too much detail kills a workout. Concentrate on the muscles you're working and the rest will take care of itself through mind muscle connection and proprioceptive demand So that was an excellent question because of what it reveals All right, very very good question set number two booyah I'll do it this way to get a better angle sort of sideways Between sets, I'm going to do my rotator cuff work, which I usually do at the end of my workouts, but I'm going to do them between sets because it's not going to affect my recovery. Notice the oxygen debt. That tells you how close to work capacity you're going. So people who say body part training isn't hard enough aren't training their body parts correctly. Should be very methodical doing body part training. One thing I will say about lunges. A lot of people don't do lunges correctly. They do it more like a single leg split squat. They come out, they drop down, they come up, and then they step back. That's not a lunge, that's a split squat with just a, with just a uh, locomotion variation thrown in. A pure lunge is pushing back right from the moment that you lunge, like a fencer does in fencing. That's the mindset you want. Set number three. Questions? 
Still have an audience? Yep. Next set, walk around so they can see that. Angle it, man. Okay. Do you recommend Met tra Bar Training, which is one of my favorite programs for people over 50? Not really. A lot of the metabolic stuff I have in those programs are have a lot of explosive work that's too hard on the most susceptible joints. Explosive push-ups, things like that, are too hard on the aging shoulder joint, ball and socket joints, knee joints with squat jumps, things like that. I have created other variations of that, uh, but body part training makes the most sense after age 50. Now you notice I've segue my rest because I'm training lower body engaging what I'm doing biofeedback 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 I'm sitting between sets now oh no I'm not burning calories see my previous uh, webinar about that myth all right set number four This is my prehab stuff for my bad shoulders. So. Over here. Keep the elbow tight in.
when I first started doing the rotator cuff work, I could only use the second pin. Over the course of weeks, doing internal rotation one work, external rotation the next workout, saved me from shoulder replacement surgery and it's allowed me to keep training for over a decade. So important stuff. Rest up, Buttercup. Got it one more set. Questions, problems, complaints? See the complaint department on the ladder. I'm busy working out. I'm hanging and I'm banging. Seriously, see how the hang position of the dumbbells allows me to do exercises that other people say they can't do anymore because I do them. So range of motion gets better load gets better strength gets better by avoiding those things you actually set yourself up the area atrophies the muscles around the weak points atrophy you set yourself up for actual injury by doing that so with a little know-how the title of this workout training with limitations with a little know-how you can still hang them and bang them develop your physique all right i'm an old fart and i'm still doing it so last set of these Get out of my way. Set of these. Mm -hmm. Oh, a speckle of sweat. Yeah. How can I do that when I'm resting between sets? You got a compliment. Good morning, and glad I happened to see you live on my newsfeed this morning. Learning so much from reading your books and catching the webinars. I'm 60 plus and working to maintain good health and fitness. To What's the name? Training. Um, Pamela. Pamela. Anyone 60 plus gets a thumbs up from all of us. Anyone tuning in, show Pamela some love. Yes. You're over 60, you're over 50, trust me. Until you hit that age, you have no idea the challenges of training. If you have a personal trainer who's under 40 and you're not, they're not gonna understand the limitations of your particular needs. And you got a question. Yep. Don, is both the Bosa ball uh, work good for older adults. Okay, that's a good question. Bosa ball, kettlebells. Folks, don't get caught up in magic tools, magic equipment. They're just tools in the toolbox. The tools in the toolbox are only as effective as the crafts, craftsman who uses them and uses them correctly. You don't take a hammer where you need a screwdriver. You don't take a BOSU where you use a dumbbell. All right, there's no magic pieces of equipment. We need to stop glorifying kettlebells. There's certifications for TRX, certifications for kettlebells. Why no certifications for dumbbells? They're the most versatile training equipment out there. Why no certifications for that? I could have a certification for my functional trainer because I can do 100 exercises on here you've never seen before. So the magic is in the method. All right, keep that in mind. No magic tools. The magic is in the method. The craftsman uses the same old tools in instinctual and effective ways. All right, that's the master craftsman. It's not about shiny tools in the toolbox. It's about effective tools in the toolbox. All right, so now, anything else? No, all good. 
So remember the title of this, folks. Because now I'm going to show you some funky stuff. Training with limitations. Remember what I said. I've got no discs in my lower back. And now, after all these years since the surgery, I got scar tissue. I can't do much spinal compression. I can't do much lower lumbar loading. And my shoulders are shot. Uh, anytime, sometimes on a given day of the week, I need to get, take one hand to help the other hand to reach for something higher than shoulder level. That's how limited the bony changes in my shoulders have been. My osteopath said my shoulders look like an 80 year old man's if it wasn't for the surrounding muscle. But here I am. We're hanging, we're banging, no excuses. Training around limitations is different than training through them. But here's some fun. And this goes back to the previous question, so I hope the questioner is still here. Yep. About BOSU and etc. etc. I train around my limitations, but because of my craftsmanship, my four decades of expertise, I know what's what. So we went from vertical movement to horizontal accentuated movement, going back to vertical, but with a gravitational pull from the functional trainer and the surfing the curve reps game, we're gonna have a little fun with squats. I can no longer get barbells behind my shoulders or anything like that. I can't load my spine, but check this out. Up. You haven't trained legs until you've done 15 to 25 reps on squats. Now, pay attention next set. Next set I'll get you to walk around me. You see I still get butt to heels. Because of the gravitational pull of the functional trainer pulling me back on a specific angle and because of the frontal hold, no stress on my shoulder joint, still no spinal compression and very little lower lumbar strain. So I'm strengthening my legs. I'm getting them to expand their range of motion, which is very important if you're over 50. And I'll explain some other stuff. But so far we have six sets of squats at six working reps. That's around 40 reps. We have five sets of lunges at eight reps. That's 40 reps. I'm gonna do four sets here of around 15. So we're going to go way over the 100 rep mark for the workout, which is way more important than how much you lift is how you lift it. So giddy up, buttercup. Enough standing around yakking. And Donald said, this is gold. <laughs> I think I increased the weight, didn't I? Yeah. So shoot me all around. Okay. If you want to get the depth. And then I'm going to show you some funky functional trainer stuff. We put the fun in functional, and we put the fun in funky. Workouts should be fun. They shouldn't be require a PhD in exercise science. Boom. Boom. 15. Up. Drop it. Boom. Up.
Get off my chair. <laughs> One of the expressions I like to use when I'm doing those mind-muscle connection. I like to say to myself, drop them and pop them so that I make sure I go below parallel. I make sure I feel it with my legs and I make sure I'm mentally exploding out of the pocket. And at the top, you might not notice, but as I lock out, I flex the legs to keep constant tension on the muscle. Again, innervation training principle from my book, The Able Approach, train the muscle, not the movement. So this little mental notes, like drop them and pop them, helps me maintain that. Remember, you control the load. The load should never control you. All right, so enough of the ego training out there. The reason I can still look half decent from the neck down at my age is because I'm not a slave to my ego in the gym. Leave the ego at the door, leave the ego at the door to the dungeon. And look, you can rest between sets and still have this. All right, so you can see I'm sweating. It's about the proper programming. So people who say body part training isn't hard enough, they don't understand work capacity, recovery capacity. What I'm doing right now, complete rest, allows me to hang them and bang them even harder. Next set to wit, let's do it. Fifteen's the number. Up, up. Drop them and pop them. Up, up. View. Up, one, up, oh, up, thirteen, up, fourteen, up, fifteen. Constant tension on the muscle. Oxygen death tells me how close to failure and maximum work capacity I was going, which is all an indication of my current conditioning level. All these things have to factor in to what you're doing. You see at the end of this, what a high volume workout this has been. But we got some to go, yeah, one more set of these, and four by 15 here will be 60 reps. Added to the other reps, we're well into over 100 reps of resistance training. We went vertical, horizontal, vertical, and then we're gonna finish with some horizontal. I'll show you some able, cool able stuff after this next set. But right now, let me just let me get caught up and then we'll hang and bang one more of these beautiful functional squats. No stress on the shoulder, no stress on the lower lumbar, no spinal compression. Booyah! Okay, you got a compliment. Uh, Cheryl, I'm sitting at my desk at work watching you without sound. I'll catch the replay later when I can hear your wise words. <laughs> You'll hear me gr grunting and groaning, Cheryl, so I hope that's not a turn off for you as it is for other people. But. Such is the beast within. <sighs> Remember, grizzly bear on the inside, teddy bear on the outside. Be part grizzly and all teddy. All right, giddy up, buttercup. What's the number? 15's the number. You asking me or telling me? 15's the number. We don't do question marks, we do exclamation points. I'm not sure I'm going to sit and watch. We're hanging, we're banging. Oh. Up. Up. Last set.
go. Notice now, as I get near the end, the difference between professional execution and application and very amateurish. As it gets harder, I don't try to race to get to that number. I actually slow it down even more to make sure that the emphasis stays on the working muscle. Train the muscle, not the movement. I'd rather not get the 15 targeted reps than to get them by going less, uh, less range of motion, using momentum by going faster, doing what I call panic reps. All right, the professional never does that. Now it's time to show you the versatility of the functional trainer. Any questions or comments? No, all good. We still got an audience? Yes. Remember the title of this workout. All week, training with limitations. My space, your space. Now a lot of people with very well equipped home gyms, they'll write me and they'll say, coach I can't do leg curls, I can't do leg extensions at my gym. Therefore, I can't do your workouts. Oh, really? Well, when it comes to O'Reilly, I like to say O'Reilly. So here we go. I'm gonna show you some variations that are actually better than your gym as, as the week goes on. See, I'm getting nice recovery between sets. Make sure I have this lined up. Questions or comments? No, all good. So remember, innervation training methodology, it's one thing to understand it. It's another thing to know how to apply it. We went vertical, horizontal, back to vertical, now horizontal. Oh, but coach, I don't have a leg curl machine at my gym, but I have a functional trainer. Well, giddy up, buttercup. <sighs> Getting from all, all angles here. Yep. Even the front where I'm holding on. Again, if you understand training methodology, you understand muscle function, it's not about training equipment, it's about innovation and how you can make things work. I even changed the angle to match some of the more advanced leg curl machines at the gym by putting my adjustable bench on the decline. All right, now what else I'm going to show you that you can't do with a leg curl gym, leg curl machine at your gym. I'm going to do two sets bilateral and two sets alternating. You think you can do an alternating leg curl at your gym, but you really can't because you curl it up with one, lower it with the other. It's offsetting the individual targeting. But here, because you've got a dual access loading option, you can train single leg option. I'll show you more about that next week. But right now, again, abide in the intelligence of a workout and not a single exercise. Notice how I explained over and over again. We went vertical, horizontal, vertical, 
and now horizontal. Set two for you. Grab on. Up. 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 Comments, questions? Yes, Pamela, she's a she's an at-home exerciser, so learning variations using basic equipment available to me at home is very important. This is why I love your library of exercise demos and posted YouTube videos. Thanks, Pamela. Appreciate that, Pamela. Now, the reason I'm resting here on my knees is because I just don't want to bother taking off the straps. As long as I'm resting, that's okay. So now, I'm going to go alternating leg curls and try to get higher reps. I might, I might not. Hopefully you guys are still there. Yeah. I'm sure some of you had to leave over the course of an hour, but you're seeing how the application of training methodology matters than more than just slapping together a bunch of exercises and also how I explained surfing the curve. How we went from a variation of reps games within work capacity limits so we went from lower reps to higher reps and various planes and ranges of motion hopefully you can all see me okay throw some emoticons there if you're still with us i don't like talking to myself i do enough of that as it is okay alternating and you know what for alternating next set i will just raise the bench Still doing leg curl. Just change the variation to alternated continuous tension. Okay. Whoa. Mike's got a question. Um, if you would be so kind and have time to demo a dumbbell stiff leg deadlift. Well, I think we've demoed them with Andy on other. I don't like to do anything that puts my limitations in jeopardy. So. It would be the exact same dumbbells hanging at your side, but it's not part of this particular workout. And this is meant to be a workout in real time, live time. It's not meant to be exercise demos, Mike. So mm. uh, hopefully you can save that for another yeah. uh, call in session that we'll be doing again in the new year. But this is just real time workout. So uh, next week's workout, I might be able to do that. And he's just asking, are you going to be doing this approximately the same time each morning this yes. week? Yes, I, I'm very regimented about my workout times except Thursday. I work out early on Thursdays because that's when my housekeeper's here. And if I'm in her way, she's likely, likely to either dust me, bleach me, or vacuum me up. So I, I stay action. out of her way. <laughs> Last set. B, as a member of the over 50 crowd, injured or not, I am inspired. What's your name? Moni B, Monica. Hey, Monica. Appreciate it. Now, for those lying leg curls, I didn't even show you the other option. It's just that I could bring this back up 
to flat. And then I have another variation. Now, the other thing we focused on, we went gravitational pull. Vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, but we also went hip dominant and transitioned into knee dominant. Also, a very effective approach that's simple, not complicated. However, people will also write, well coach, that's all well and good for that's all well and good for leg curls, but my my gym doesn't have a leg extension. So I can't do leg extensions either for knee dominant stuff. Giddy up, buttercup. And Marilyn, it's C63 going strong. And as you say, lots of limitations due to age, so love your variations. Well, stay, Marilyn, did you say? Yes. Yeah. Stay tuned, Marilyn, because all week I'm doing body part variations to train around limitations. So important thing there, uh, Marilyn, is your GPT, your general preparation phase for your workouts um, should be constant every day no matter what you're doing and you consider that as prehab for the aging joints. So very important and congrats to be still hanging and banging at our age. Again, like I say, unless your personal trainer or coach is over 50 themselves, they have no understanding of what's involved in terms of training and recovery over 50. I suggest read my book, The Aging Proposition, and Physique After 50. So, enough squawking, less talking, let's hang them, let's bang them. All right, so like I said, oh, no leg extension in your gym? There's some tissues for your issues, but let's get doing it. What a little know-how can bring. Now on these, I'm gonna go with the pumping cadence and a couple technique things I wanna string. Notice how my lower leg comes up above the anchor upper leg, all right, to get peak contraction. And I'm keeping higher rep range because of how we laid out the surfing the curve in the workout from lower reps and higher load and as we progressed along. In another week, this exact workout, I would switch and reverse the orientation, start with leg exchanges and do them for low reps, high load, and finish with the dumbbell squats for high reps and low load. So that's another simple way to vary it. So. People still with me? Yes. I see even from the very beginning with all my talking and explaining, we're still just hitting the one hour mark. So given that I aimed the equipment Took time to aim it at the camera, talk between sets, answer questions. We're still around an hour's workout time, so usually it'd be a little faster, but just goes to show. And six sets of squats, five sets of lunges is 11, four sets of functional squats is 15 sets, four sets of lying leg curls is 19 sets, four sets here, 22 sets of legs. Boom! You're never too old to live bold. Set two. Fifteen. Up. Fifteen.
Notice, I'm not about to load. I didn't just go up and wait for the sake of going up and wait. I'm not in the gym. Oh, some hot little girl walked by, I better increase the weight and puff out my chest. I'm all about the hanging and the banging, making sure I'm feeling in the muscle what I want to be feeling. It's not about counting reps, and it's not about impressing anyone else with how much you lift. It's not how much you lift, it's how you lift it. And it's not about magic exercises, it's the sequence of exercises and how they're used. So there's all kinds of ways to do that. And that's what my program design masterclass is all about. So this is just one week in the life of physique after 50, training around limitations. Two more sets, any comments or questions? That will go. Now, tactically, notice a couple things. Watch your finger on the camera. Um, notice I'm not in a hurry to get from one side to the next side. Not about how fast I can get through it. Notice also the knee dominant work, there's less oxygen demand, less oxygen debt between sets, which also points to the reality that rest between sets should be a subjective interpretation of work capacity and performance readiness. It should never have anything to do with the clock. All right, oh, rest 30 seconds, really? Rest 30 seconds between all out squats and leg extensions on a single leg? That makes no sense. So enough of the outside in nonsense. Another thing, if your workouts are under 70 minutes, hydrate with water. You don't need green colored, nuclear infused water. You don't need branched chain amino acid nonsense. You don't need vitamin infused, caffeinated, peri workout, nutrition infused, magic performance. You just need good old fashioned H2O and you need it from a tap. You don't need magic Himalayan water from the far reaches of the earth and special glacial waters to enhance your workout and recovery. Stop the nonsense. All right, stay hydrated, but do so with water. The magic is in the method. It's not an outside in nonsense. The only thing that gets lighter from that is your wallet. All right, now, unless you want to just make your urine more expensive, then just drink water. I'm giving you pearls here, folks. I'm giving you pearls. Last set. Now last set is four by 15, and that's 60 reps just of leg extensions. So we're approaching way past 150 reps for this workout. Uh, 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 uh,
All right, folks, that's day one on this particular physique after 50 leg day. 22 sets, gazillion reps. Look, you can't fake this stuff, folks. So people who think that body part training just isn't hard enough as you're bouncing around in your boot camp classes, you don't understand. And at age over 50, folks, if you're part of the Platinum Club, this is for you. Train for how it makes you feel and less for how it makes you look. All right, the cosmetic, the cosmetic benefits are just bonus points. Like I said, I'm racked with the consequences of my younger years of outperforming my body. Osteoarthritis, no discs in my lower back, previous steroid use that made it even worse for me now. So lots of limitations, not an excuse. You use expertise to work around that. So, uh, shout out to Ange on the camera. Yeah. Shout out to Skins uh, Workout Wear. Skins Australia. Uh, Skins yeah. Australia for providing the workout wear. And uh, day two tomorrow, and now in the recovery period, if you have any questions about workouts or about this specific workout, I'll take your questions now. But keep in mind, all week long, I'm doing training with limitations. So I can point out to you how to do it and why it matters the way I'm doing things. So we're going to do some real fun uh, exercises that are all about not being fun exercises. They're all about training around limitations. And the last thing you need to know is an exercise shouldn't be complicated. It shouldn't require three or four pieces of equipment to do an exercise. You shouldn't be standing on a BOSU with a cable in one hand and a, a friggin medicine ball in another hand and uh, dumbbell in your other hand. Stop it. All right, stop it. Exercises should be easy to execute so you can focus on the muscles involved, not on a hundred other things that take you away from the mind-muscle connection. So that's day one leg workout. Questions or comments? Uh, Mike, he loved it so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for letting us observe you. All right, Mike. Well, tomorrow's chest day, so I hope you'll tune in for that. That's when I really show you the limitations of my shoulder work. Um, and I'll talk more about that uh, tomorrow. Limitations in, in the chest range uh, that I have now, but I can still hang them and bang them. Uh, so we'll get out there tomorrow, but check it out, folks. You can't fake that. So people who tell you that body part training just isn't hard enough, listen, success leaves clues. And the people who have the best physiques are people who train for the best physiques. So physique athletes tend to have the best physiques. So success leaves clues. Follow the clues instead of living in denial. It's not about how many calories you burn in a workout. It's how you benefit your hormonal and biochemical balance. And that has more to do with the cumulative effects of training than the calorie burning effects of training. So that's day one, leg workout, hanging and banging. So hopefully you benefited in some way. I'll post this to YouTube later. Tomorrow, day two, chest workout. Any final comments or questions? Yeah, Pamela, she shared with her 50 plus fitness pals. Good on you, Pamela. Awesome, Pamela. Get them to tune in tomorrow as well, and I'll be happy to take your questions between sets because I only got a couple weeks, and then I'm, I'm taking my annual Christmas break off diet and training, uh, see how fat I can get in two weeks, and then uh, rely on the cycle diet to take it all off. Any other comments no, or questions? Good. All right. Oh, Mike. So, well, Mike Kirsten, welcome. All right, so uh, tomorrow's chest day, and uh, by all means, folks, when you're on, please hit your share button. Throw some emoticons across the screen so uh, I know that you're out there. So if you're not out there, I'll just keep my comments to myself and just keep hanging and banging. Welcome to the Able Dungeon. As you can see, you don't need a lot of equipment. And a lot of the times, I just get tired of the nonsense that goes on in commercial gyms anymore. People sitting on their phones between sets, occupying equipment. Other people that give you the stink eye because you've actually sweat on a piece of equipment. Uh, and you're not um, scribing it down after with Comet and Bleach and all the rest of the nonsense that goes out there. So sometimes I like the inner sanctuary of the Able Home Dungeon, and I like to show you that you don't need a lot of equipment to get by. So again, that's day one, leg workout. Day two tomorrow is chest. Same bat time, same bat channel. 
I hope you'll join us and uh, by all means bring your questions and comments about training, not about diet, cycle diet or anything else. This is not a webinar question and answer. It's going to be a hang em and bang em, physique after 50, real time, training with limitations, webinars all week long and then maybe even next week as well as long as there's a, a demand for it out there. So thanks for being out there. Um, time to refill and I'll see, hopefully see some of you tomorrow and we hang and bang and we giddy up buttercup for some chest work. See you tomorrow.